Every single day, over 200,000 pairs of shoes, scuffed sneakers, worn out boots, and broken sandals are discarded. That's enough to cover an entire football field in rubber, leather, and foam. But here's the twist. These shoes don't end up in landfills. They're reborn, shredded, separated, repurposed. They become running tracks, playgrounds, new sneakers, and even the ground beneath your feet. So how does it happen? What kind of factory can break down thousands of shoes every single hour and turn them into something useful? Let's step inside the world's most efficient shoe recycling plants to find out. The modern world has a shoe problem. Every year, over 24 billion pairs of shoes are manufactured. That's more than three pairs for every person on the planet. And while styles change and feet grow, those shoes don't just disappear. Most end up in landfills where they can take anywhere from 30 to 80 years to decompose. The glues used in manufacturing? Toxic. The synthetic rubber? Non-biodegradable. The dyes and foams? Potentially hazardous to soil and water. In the US alone, it's estimated that over 300 million pairs of shoes are thrown away annually. Multiply that globally, and we're looking at a mountain of waste, one that grows every single day. Why are shoes so hard to recycle? because they're complex. A single sneaker might contain leather, synthetic mesh, EVA foam, TPU plastic, rubber, metal eyelets, nylon thread, and petroleum-based adhesives. Unlike plastic bottles or aluminum cans, there's no one-size-fits-all approach. This is where specialized shoe recycling factories step in, engineering solutions to a problem most consumers never even think about thousand pairs of old shoes come from every single day. The journey starts with bins, thousands of them, positioned in retail stores, gyms, schools, community centers, and donation drives. Nike's Reuse a Shoe bins, for example, are a familiar sight in major cities. Adidas, Puma, and independent nonprofits also run collection programs worldwide. Some shoes arrive from returns, unsold or slightly defective stock. Others are donated by consumers clearing out closets. Some factories even receive batches directly from landfills, intercepted just before disposal. Every shoe is tagged, weighed, and sorted. Shipments arrive on pallets, often barcoded and scanned into massive intake systems. Some facilities handle over 100 tons of material a day. Speed matters here. Workers unload shoes by hand or with conveyor-assisted pallets. Volume is king. Every minute counts when thousands of shoes are coming through the doors. And it's not just about collection. It's about consistency. Factories rely on daily supply contracts and partnerships to ensure the flow never stops. Because recycling 200,000 pairs a day isn't a marketing slogan, it's an operational necessity. Once inside the factory, the shoes don't all head to the same machine. First, they're sorted by type, condition, and material. Some pairs, still in wearable shape, are pulled for donation or resale in developing countries, but most are destined for recycling. Workers inspect each pair, removing metal eyelets, zippers, and logos that can jam machinery. Industrial magnets pull out any hidden steel shanks embedded in work boots. Then, the shoes are stripped down. High-speed rotary cutters slice soles from uppers. Foam is separated from mesh synthetic leather peeled from rubber. It's like disassembling a complex puzzle made of a dozen incompatible materials. This pre-processing phase is vital. If you feed a shoe hole into a shredder, you get contaminated output, useless for reuse. But separate the parts first? You unlock value. Some facilities are developing AI-assisted sorting, using cameras and material recognition algorithms to automate what was once entirely manual. Because the better the separation now, the cleaner the output later. With the shoes dismantled, the real transformation begins. Materials are loaded onto conveyors and fed into industrial shredders, machines built like mechanical maws. They tear through rubber, foam, and fabric with spinning blades, reducing everything to fist-sized chunks in seconds. From here, the stream of fragments moves through a series of separation processes. Magnetic drums extract any remaining metal. Air classifiers use gusts of wind to separate lighter foam from heavier rubber. Vibration screens sort by size. In some plants, water flotation tanks divide materials based on density. 
Textiles float. Rubber sinks. The result? Three primary outputs. Crumb rubber, derived from midsoles and outsoles. Foam granulate, from sock liners and midsoles. Textile shreds, from uppers and linings. Not everything is recoverable. Some contaminated fragments or glue-saturated pieces get sent to energy recovery, burned in high-efficiency incinerators to offset factory power usage. But the majority, up to 80% in high-efficiency plants, is salvaged. Each granule is now ready for its second life. At this stage, the separated materials are still rough, so factories refine them further, grinding rubber into fine crumb, compressing foam into dense blocks, and treating textiles for cleanliness. Rubber is passed through a series of granulators, reducing it to particles as small as one millimeter. These are then cleaned to remove dust, adhesives, and microplastics. The final product, a high-quality crumb rubber suitable for resurfacing athletic tracks or playgrounds. Foam, once shredded, is compacted using heat and pressure. It can be molded into carpet underlay or insulation panels. Textiles are the hardest to repurpose. Most become low-grade fillers or are used in experimental composite materials, combined with resins or concrete to add strength and elasticity. Some research labs are even exploring how to chemically recycle synthetic fibers back into usable polyester. Every output is tested, graded for purity, color, flexibility, and tensile strength. These specs matter. A track surface needs different elasticity than a shoe insole. Nothing leaves the facility until it meets the standard. So what happens to all this ground-up shoe material? Crumb rubber is the star player. It's used in the base layer of running tracks, synthetic turf fields, weight room flooring, and even in some automotive parts like mud flaps or bump stops. Foam gets a second life as padding, beneath carpets, inside packaging, or even molded into acoustic panels that line music studios and gymnasiums. Textile scraps have the most unpredictable path. In some cases, they're compressed into rigid composite boards used in construction as underlayment or wall backing. Others are burned in energy recovery systems to generate electricity for the same factories they came from. And yes, some shoe material becomes new shoes. Nike's Grind program integrates recycled rubber into new outsoles. Adidas has experimented with closed-loop production using monomaterial sneakers. Smaller brands are popping up that design with disassembly and recyclability in mind from the start. The goal? Circularity. A system where today's sneakers become tomorrow's gear, with minimal waste in between. Let's step onto the floor of a factory capable of processing over 200,000 shoes a day. The scale is staggering. Imagine a warehouse the size of a football field, lined with conveyor belts, shredders, sorting stations, and palletized bales of material stacked 10 feet high. Shoes arrive in bulk and are immediately weighed, logged, and tracked. The facility runs 24 hours a day in staggered shifts. Operators monitor shredders from control panels. Workers in protective gear rotate shifts at sorting stations. Forklifts buzz between loading docks and processing lines. Some factories are highly automated. Vision systems powered by machine learning identify and sort material in real time. Robotic arms separate foam from rubber. Shredders self-calibrate based on input density. Everything is designed for efficiency. Dust is captured through ventilation hoods and filtered out. Noise is mitigated through acoustic insulation. Wastewater is treated on-site. Each stage is linked by timing and flow. A delay at the shredding line can back up the entire operation. That's why factory managers run simulations and maintenance drills to keep the system running smoothly. By the end of each shift, tons of raw material are bagged, labeled, and loaded onto outbound trucks, ready for manufacturers, construction crews, and product designers. It's not just recycling, it's precision industry. Shoe recycling at this scale wouldn't be possible without big names getting involved. Nike was one of the first. Its Reuse a Shoe program launched in the 1990s and has since recycled tens of millions of pairs. The Nike grind material is now used in everything from playgrounds to new footwear lines. Adidas introduced the Futurecraft Loop, a performance running shoe made entirely from one material designed to be ground down and respun into new shoes. 
their made-to-be-remade line pushes this concept even further. Other brands are catching up. Puma, Allbirds, and Veja have all introduced recyclable or biodegradable footwear lines. Startups like Thousand Fell and Nothing New are building their entire business models around take-back and reuse. Third-party recyclers like TerraCycle partner with multiple companies to collect and process hard-to-recycle footwear across the globe. But the challenge remains. Can these programs scale fast enough to match the 24 billion shoes made each year? The next evolution of shoe recycling isn't just in how we break them down. It's in how we build them in the first place. Designers are now creating shoes with recycling in mind. That means fewer materials, simpler construction, and adhesives that can be melted or dissolved without toxic byproducts. Monomaterial shoes, made entirely from one type of plastic or textile, are gaining traction. These can be shredded and reprocessed without the complex sorting of traditional footwear. Others are experimenting with biodegradable components, soles that break down into non-toxic compounds, uppers made from mushroom leather or recycled ocean plastic. Stitching that dissolves in water. 3D printing is also changing the game, allowing shoes to be made on demand, with minimal waste, and from recycled feedstocks. But challenges remain. Cost, consumer adoption, and the logistics of collection. Still, the goal is clear. A circular system where no shoe ever has to become waste again. At the end of the day, it's easy to forget what happens to our shoes once we throw them out. They disappear from our lives, but not from the planet. That's why these factories matter. They're not just places where shoes go to die. They're where old materials get a new purpose, where yesterday's sneakers become tomorrow's sports courts, safety mats, and building materials. Recycling over 200,000 pairs of shoes every day isn't just an industrial feat. It's a glimpse of what's possible when waste meets innovation. So next time your soles wear thin, remember, that old pair still has value. Drop them in a recycling bin. Choose brands that design with the end in mind. Support the systems that close the loop. Because in a world where 24 billion new shoes are made each year, every recycled pair matters. And what's on your feet today just might become the ground you run on tomorrow.